Hello everyone, my name is Loco and welcome to some more Heroes of the Storm. Now today I'm gonna be playing a game right here and in this game I'm gonna be explaining the new hero that got added. It is going to be none other than the Butcher. Now as you can see I did have the special event right there because it is the first game of the day. But in this video I'm gonna be going over the abilities that this guy has. I'm gonna be going over... Oh, apparently everyone wants to go bot. <laughs> I'm gonna go over the abilities that this guy has. I'm gonna go over a talent build and I'm gonna be going over a general strategy when playing the Butcher. I've been playing him for quite some time right now. I think I got him at like level level 7 or level 8 or something like that and he obviously came out a couple of days ago um, now most of the people that uh, that you know uh, are teaming up with me especially in the in the random queue the solo queue think that the butcher is a tank not the case he's actually a melee assassin and he's very 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 powerful but we'll go over that all of in a second um, the first standard we're gonna be picking right here is going to be fixtures now I gotta make sure that I don't you know have my ally die I think we could kill that guy uh, etc but it's all right it is all good so, what is the Butcher all about? As you will notice in a little bit, the Butcher is all about mm, fresh meat. You guys will probably know him from the uh, Diablo franchise. Basically what happens whenever I kill a minion, those little drops of blood drop. And what happens is that when I pick those up, I will actually gain a whole bunch of extra damage. That's what my trait is all about. However, the build that we're going to be focusing on right here... She's dead. The build that we're going to be focusing on is going to give us even more use from those fresh blood charges. So the first time that we picked is going to be Fictuals and collecting that fresh blood, which drops from minions and from heroes, heroes drop three, uh, will give us extra health. So that's what this guy is all about. You got to be looting those little little things um, and at some point, you know, you're going to be maxed out on them. But even, even then, you will still be healing up from gathering more and more of them. Okay. So that's the main thing to keep in mind about this guy. You keep healing up as long as you kill stuff. If you're not killing stuff, you're not going to be healing up either. And that is that is the big thing to uh, to keep in mind. Now, I got to be watching out. I know there's a butcher. Don't get hooked. 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 Ooh. All right. Oh, I got hooked. All right. Got to get out of there. So, as far as my abilities go, my first ability is called Hamstring. Basically what it does... Oh, we're going to have to go up there. Yeah, just go, just go. My first ability is called Hamstring. It's like this single target shot thing, and it, you know, it does a lot of damage. It does a lot of damage and it slows enemy targets. That is the basic idea of it. The W ability basically marks a target. I'm gonna be doing that right here. And when I do continuous attacks against that target, I will actually also um, get healing from it. So it's very, very useful. Second talent we're gonna pick is Unrelenting Pursuit. We'll go over the reasoning about it in a second. Um, but that's what, how that one works, and then the E ability, you've already seen that a couple times as well. Basically, the E ability, it's called uh, Ruthless Onslaught, and when I activate it and put it on an anim enemy, basically, I charge towards that target, and I stun him, and I do a lot of damage. Now, while you're actually in that charge animation, you can cancel it as well. So, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of utility that you can get done as well um, with that ability. So, those are, you know, the, the basic abilities, the QWE that we got, and in combination with the fresh blood, it basically means that we are better off nuking down enemies real quick because if we don't kill them we're not gonna get healing anymore and since we are you know technically an assassin um, it's pretty difficult to make good use of it so I am charging it right there but mostly just to grab those two uh, drops of blood now for the moment the most amount of um, these charges that I can have is actually 25 that's the default amount however we're gonna be going up to 35 which will mean that I get 35 extra attack speed attack damage and later on a whole bunch of extra healing as well so, when you die, you lose those those charges of blood. So, basically, staying alive is going to be, you know, the, the the core reasoning why this guy can be so powerful. Well, I know she's going to be able to fault out of there, but we got him, I think. Oh, we got him. We got him good. Nice. Going to be looting those, and as you can see, healing up. Very nice. So, we didn't even need Nova right there, did we? Oh, well, got to do it once again. Oh, ETC, can you help? No, ETC doesn't want to... Oh, I don't want to get hooked. Don't get hooked. <laughs> I didn't mean to hook actually, that's the ancient spear. Same thing, same concept. Right, next standard we're gonna pick is gonna be Abattoir. Abattoir will basically give us the chance to go up to 35 stacks, and that's the nice thing about it. We will be heading to the bottom lane very shortly, by the way, because I know for a fact that we will get um, those shrines activated very shortly. Now, as far as the talents go, what are we actually picking? The build that I'm going for in this video allows me to be focused mostly on my auto attacks and on my, you know, my passive trade. I need to make sure... Yeah, we need to go bot. 
Um, I need to make sure that I'm killing as many of these little guys as possible to keep my health going and to have maximum amount of auto attack damage. That is my goal. I am still going to be using as many abilities as possible, but I know there's different builds that focus, for example, only on the hamstring ability uh, that give you a lot more damage but less sustain. So I would say the build that we're playing right here will give you an all-round great, like, all-round great character. You don't really have to worry about certain maps, maybe on some other maps that are currently not in a map pool, like the Haunted Mines. You can go ahead and click the uh, Invigoration right here at Tier 1, and then go for the Flail Axe right here. Uh, pretty useful as well, um, but like I said, you know, oh, I did end up cancelling my ability right there. Gotta be real careful here. But like I said, you know, we're focusing on long-term engagements here. Alright. Okay, so I am activating my W right now on her. As you can see, I'm healing up pretty badly. I can go down here, though, if I'm not careful. Yeah, Vala was focusing me there. So we do end up falling. Um, now, I mentioned that this guy is an assassin, right? The reason why a lot of people are confused is because if you have the W ability, the Butcher's Brand, on an enemy target, and they're hitting you, and you're hitting back, you will get more healing oftentimes than they can actually dish out. You get 150%. Um, of the damage that you do back in healing and versus minions, you can also activate it on minions, um, it is 75%. So it's very, very useful. Now with this build, one nice little plus that you don't really have to worry about is that you can easily solo these kind of camps. Like once you hit level 7, you can you can take down these camps very, very easily. At level 7, the obvious pick um, was the Abattoir right there. Like I mentioned, you can pick out the first two talents if you are playing on a map that's maybe a little bit shorter in general, but this should be working out just fine. So, at level 7, you could be going for something else, but honestly, Abattoir is just so incredibly good. It will give you 35 stacks in total, and it will also not make you lose everything when you go down. So, it's just, you know, it's a, it's a great, it's a great talent. I mean, more more healing, more damage. It's, it's very, very nice. So, yeah, right now, I'm just back into the action right here, trying to be, you know, healing up um, myself with some of these blood charges, but mostly just collecting them until I had, at the very least, 35, at which point I will be at my very strongest. Gonna be going for the Lamp of the Slaughter. Furnace Blast, very good as well. Gotta watch out, by the way, for Gorge. I don't want to get hooked here in Gorge. Um, but Furnace Blast is the other ability. I would use that in maybe a game where you're up against the Lost Vikings or where you're up against, um, you know, basically like lower health minions. Maybe a lot of assassins or something like that. But the basic idea of it is that... Oh, she actually... I was gonna use my ult here. The basic idea of my Lamp of the Slaughter, there we go, I activated it right there, is to make sure that someone cannot leave and basically take them out of the fat, uh, battle like that. Gonna be running in. Okay, getting my extra healing done. And I gotta make sure that I don't go down, don't get hooked. Woo -hoo -hoo. <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. So he will actually end up falling as well. Sorry, I'm gonna make sure that I'm drinking from the fountain. I don't wanna, you know, don't wanna go uh, down right here. Oh, actually, I was gonna head towards the bottom lane, but never mind. I'll stay in the top lane. But yeah, that's basically what this guy is all about. Gonna be killing some creep tumors if I can. There we go. And um, it's 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 a very, very powerful healing. A uh, very, very powerful he hero. Now, what does the Lamp of the Slaughter do? I should probably clarify. Basically, it's a relatively low cooldown. It's 60 seconds, which is not nearly as bad as the Furnace Blast. And it, like, change a target towards... Like, the first target that is leaving the little circle that you put down on the ground, it changed that target for four seconds. It feels a lot like playing with the Void Prison from Zera 2. However, a little bit weaker, I would say. But it's incredible for, like, chasing down enemies. I mean, you cannot run from the Butcher. It's not possible to run from the Butcher. I'm pretty certain. Okay, let's be heading towards the middle lane right now. Or, at the very least, make sure that Zagara is not going to be pushing everything down. Alright, well... I don't really want to be there by myself without having any, you know, any backup. <clears throat> so, we can easily pick off heroes like this. Look, here we go. So, I'm going to be charging in, using my chain of, or my lamp of the slaughter right now, and he cannot leave. Like, right now, he cannot leave. As you can see, he's just stuck. And we will be able to chase down enemies like that all game long. It's a short cooldown, as you can see, once that thing, like, deactivates, you still have... You know, you have like 55 seconds for the next one to be active once again. Next talent we are going to be picking uh, is going to be Cray Flash. Cray Flash will make it so that if you have the W activated on an enemy, you will gain extra movement speed. And that's really what we are lacking, um, you know, very often. Um, you know, we're lacking movement speed and we don't really, we don't really want to be lacking that. So as long as I apply that one, you can see like immediately I start running a little faster. 
And obviously that once again helps you a lot with like chasing down enemies, all those kind of things. Now I can't even go ahead and... Well, I do want to go to the top lane right now. I can't even go ahead and solo the boss. Although it's a little risky. God, this is a bad, bad situation. I'm trying to save the day here, but I don't think it's gonna happen. No, I'm probably gonna get hooked here and go down myself. Okay, activating my Lamp of the Slaughter right now to try and be defensive. Oh my god, no, I'm actually... I tried saving my allies there, they were completely out of position. And sadly we ended up falling ourselves there. Oh well. I guess, um, you know, it's not the worst situation. As you can see, we didn't lose all of the stacks this time around because of the level 7 there, like right, right there, the abattoir. So, so far you can notice, I have been doing quite a bunch of damage. Oftentimes, you can actually be on par with this hero with the range damage dealers. Obviously, you know, um, most of the time the range damage dealers are gonna be topping the damage because, for example, a hero like Kiltas can just, you know, stay at a distance and pick off a lot of damage. Snipe, snipe, snipe! No snipe, sadly. Some Abathur or some Asmodan on Asmodan action here. I can't quite easily nuke enemies down by myself though, and he's actually gonna go down right here. I'm just going for the rescue in case someone else pops up, but he's dead. Okay, here we go, here we go. I'm going in. Going in. Gotta watch out because she's likely gonna use her ult. I'm using my ult right now so she cannot leave. And I'm just spreading out here from uh, Nova so, you know, she cannot like go ahead and kill us. Or, uh, you know, trap us both. But that's very nice, and it gives us, once again, a lot. Coming, boys. Coming in. Okay, Asmodan is actually pushing pretty hard right now. Uh, but you can see, like, as soon as I have my Butcher's Brand on an enemy, I will be able to heal a lot more than they can usually damage me. And that's pretty crazy. So, Gaslow is moving in, ETC moving in, we're good. Trying to go after Vala right now. Got my hamstring. And she's so Oh come on, three seconds. Okay, I'm going in. Oh my god, I'm going in. Got my butcher's brand here, so I think I can take him out as well. Gonna go for the blood frenzy here. No, 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 we're gonna have to run. We're gonna have to run. No, I need the fresh meat! Oh dang! I thought I could actually take him out just fine, but. Turns out the minions were a little bit too much right there. I shouldn't have been fighting among those minions, I don't think. It's a little scary. As you can see, obviously, you know, there's still a lot of work to be done with playing this hero. I mean, he's only been out for like a couple of days, and some of these scenarios are pretty hard to call. Ah, nobody noticed him! Nobody noticed the, the Zagara going down right there. Get him! Get him! Oh, <laughs> so scary. Well, at least ETC will be able to uh, stay alive, at least for now. Uh, but it's looking, it's looking all right. Obviously, you know, because we don't really have a way to get out of trouble unless we use our E ability, which, you know, still has like an 11 second cooldown, even with the um, unrelenting pursuit. Um, it's, it's pretty tough. You need to either commit to a battle or you're going down. Like, those are your options. There's not really a, an in-between in sort of thing, you know? You need to be either, you know, committing or you're not committing at all. And that's sort of like the, the hardest thing for playing this character. You gotta make sure that you're constantly... Um, you know, deciding whether or not you want to go in, or if you don't want to go in at all, because you're likely not getting out. As it is with most of the, you know, most of the melee assassins that are in the game. Oh wow! I actually thought ETC would easily be alive there. You should probably be careful, bro. I'm gonna take out this camp, I'm sorry, but this is much more valuable. Careful, careful boys! That's not a good scenario to be in, man. It's 4v5. Get out. You should really get out, bro. Alright. Oh, they're doing boss. Alright, I'll go in. Nah, that's not gonna do very much either. Oh! Oh! What is it? Is it? Oh man, this is a perfect example of the Butcher. A perfect example of the Butcher. <laughs> Alright, well, he's pushing pretty hard at the top lane, though. I don't think it's actually a bad situation there. You can see the healing come into play, though. I mean, we're still at a lot of health right now. <laughs> I don't my house. I don't want to give such a player a win. Well, ETC is not having a good day. It's okay, ETC. It's okay. We're, we're doing a lot of work. And to be fair, he's pushing pretty usefully, as like, very, very hard as well. Wow, really, Sonya? Really? Are you are you certain about this, Sonya? Let me just stun you for a second. 
There we go. Apply my abilities and get some crazy healing. Did, did actually ETC leave? Oh my god, he's actually AFKing. Wow. <laughs> Is this guy for real? It's because Esmodan was solo pushing top. He wants to go AFK in this scenario. Oh well. As you may have guessed, we are playing quick match. I guess these sort of things happen at quick match. Um, just, just ignore him. Just ignore him. It's the best thing to do. <laughs> Look at him. He's literally just AFKing right here. Don't take top. It's too risky. I think Esmona is actually playing quite alright though. Because of the fact that he is pushing so hard, we gotta keep. And, you know, it's it's not that bad. We can take these engagements relatively well. Obviously, we are we'll be, we will be missing out on the mush pit right now. But if we just never really engage them anymore, I think we're still gonna be alright. Now, at level 20, we're gonna go for the Nexus Blades. And this may be a bit of an odd choice, but it basically means that I get a lot more healing done with my W ability. I've seen a lot of people run, like, the Bolt of the Storm, but I honestly think that this one is better. I'm gonna go top right now. Oh, ETC is actually playing again. Oh man. He decided that throwing a little tantrum wasn't gonna do very much. Oh man, I'm going in. Oh god. No, no, no. Don't get hooked. Don't get hooked. Well, that's fine. Okay, you can't leave. Sorry about that. And we will be able to steal this, uh... This temple from her as well. So it's all good. Yeah, we're pushing pretty hard right now. Middle is gonna go down. Most likely, I think. Yep. Oh, actually, no. Wow. Oh, now it is. He used his ult. Wow. I'm sorry, my healing is a little bit too much for that. Uh... <laughs> my healing is a little bit too much. Now, there's a lot of people saying, hey, this guy is imbalanced or he's too powerful, whatever. Um, I honestly feel like it's mostly just due to people not really sure how to play against him. Um, obviously, you know, this hero is powerful, don't get me wrong. But I don't think he's very much more powerful than Illidan was in the past or that, um... Oh, you're going down. That's some of the other heroes are, you know? Okay. Let me just make sure I'm getting out of here. It's looking pretty good, though. ETC is just, uh, it's just funny to me how ETC decided to leave. Now, most of the time, after hitting level 16, once you get the blood, blood Frenzy, your damage will be insane. Like, you get 35% extra attack speed, um, which obviously is gonna give you so much. That combined with the extra healing that you get, and then obviously the extra bonus attack damage as well, the auto attacks that you do are insane. Did he just back? Oh man, he's just ensuring that he doesn't get banned. This is an interesting scenario. I think we're we're still fine though. I mean, we're we're pretty far ahead here. They can obviously come back in a 4v5 situation. That's not that uncommon. And sadly, Asmodan is playing an interesting game. Mm, this is not looking that great, to be honest. Asmodan is likely gonna go down here, yeah. Take top. It's safer. <clears throat> So, yeah, so right now we're effectively playing a 4v5. Which is not ideal. Focus Vala hard. We can win even 3v5. <laughs> Alright. We got Gaslow right here. So if they decide to move in, obviously, you know, we will be in a great position. And they actually have decided that they're not pushing in at all. Right now, actually, there's only one guy mid. I mean, if I can try and contest that, I will I will take it. Bot will go down right there. Okay, Vala or uh, Sonia right- or- oh my god. No, no, no. That's not good. Loco, don't go down. Don't go down. If I go down here, that would be the worst. Obviously, they could see me past the watchtower. That was pretty silly by me. Alright, we are hitting the core right now. And actually, Vala- or- yeah, Nova just managed to kill Vala right there. Which is huge. Core is actually taking damage right now of them. I just don't really know if I can go in. I mean, I know for a fact that I won't be able to go in. Gonna drink from the fountain. I should have stayed top. I should have just stayed top. Oh, we got full duration of that. Coming in, coming in. Where is he? Oh, I can take you. Okay, that's my heroic once again, going down. You won't be able to get out of there. And you can see, we're dealing so much damage to him. Don't go down, don't go down. Woo -hoo -hoo. Gasla almost fell. Gonna drink that blood right there. And, you know, 
be alive. So, yeah, the ETC got dropped right there for inactivity. Gonna ping him. So, obviously, you know, we will be able to get back into this. And if possible, I actually want to go heal up right now because we don't have a healer in this. Okay. Wait. <laughs> I need health. I don't really have very much. Okay. I pinked ETC right there just to make sure he's following me. And we're actually going in right now. We're actually going in. Asmodan is dishing out a lot of damage, but you can really see the Nexus Frenzy come into play right here. Or the Nexus Blade, rather, sorry. Come into play here as well. Is dealing a lot of damage. Oh god, this is not good. Okay, nuking her down as fast as I can. And that obviously works well. Oh my god, this is not good though. This is not a good scenario, guys. We should probably be hitting core here, but it's so risky. Okay, I'm gonna hit core. I'm gonna hit core, and... We managed to finish off the game. Very nice little game. In the end, we ended up doing 45,000 hero damage and 44,000 siege damage with 26 takedowns and 3 deaths. And that means we're pretty much involved in every single scenario or every single, like, team fight that happened in this game. If you have a quick look... Oh, we actually got the event quest complete as well. I forgot about that one. Um, but yeah... In general, this hero is great. He's very powerful. He has a lot of different options available to him. So if you want to give him a try and you want to be giving this build a try as well, I will leave it down below in the description as well so you can, you know, have it open on a second monitor or just write it down or whatever. In general, I would say this is the strongest all-round build, especially if you're not 100% sure what to take. On some maps, you will be better off with some other talents at level 1 and level 4, but on long-term, like, long-term play, um... You're gonna be better off with this one right here. This just gives you strong sustain throughout the entirety of the game, and I would highly recommend it. If you have any questions, leave them down below. I'll try my best to enter everything. If you haven't already, hit the follow button or the subscribe button below as well, so you'll get a notification when I upload another video. And other than that, I want to thank you guys all for watching. Have an amazing day. Do not forget to smile, and I'll see you in the next one.